radio navigation. Here we go. So we're going to take a look uh, a little bit further into VOR, which is very high frequency omnidirectional range, and DME, which is distance measuring equipment. So let's start with VOR. And VOR, if you're going to navigate using VOR, then you're going to be looking at a gauge something like this. So you'll notice all these numbers on this gauge. These are actually radials. Um, from 0 to 360 degrees. And we read them by reading all three numbers because we're cool aerospace people. So you would read this as 090 or 180 or 270 and so on. You do not read it as 90. Uh, it's just a way to make it more clear. So if we translate that onto this dial, you can see that there is not a 90. There's just a nine. So we're assuming that the last number on all these is a zero just to save space. So this would be red right here as zero, nine, zero. This is one, two, zero, one, five, zero, and so on. So if you see this heading right here, this is a heading of three, zero, zero that we're flying. And this little triangle is lit. That means we're flying to that particular location. So we'll talk more about that in a second. The VOR shows the aircraft's position relative to that VOR radial. Well, what the heck is VOR? Let's take a look um, a little further at that. This is commonly used in aircraft um, and it is a ground-based station. It was used a lot more before GPS. Now pilots most often navigate with GPS, but VOR is still a necessity if you want to get your instrument landing and instrument flight certification. Um, most people do use GPS for navigation, but this is sort of the backup and it's not going to go away. So what is a VOR radial? Well, first of all, these are um, represented by these little symbols here, this little hexagon thing. Sometimes it has a little branches sticking off of it if it's a uh, specific type of VOR, but they're based off transmitters that are on the ground. So to have a VOR transmission, you need to have a ground station. Makes it fairly expensive where GPS, the satellites are already in the sky. So that's kind of nice. Uh, but these VOR radials transmit directional information. So, you know, we're trying to zoom in here to the 130135 to 140 heading. Each degree is sort of translated from this. So it is a specific beam translated by the station, 360 degrees um, per radials, uh, one per degree. It's accurate to a one degree of precision. So we can get very accurate when we're navigating from that. And um, it's always starts 90 degree radial points magnetic east from the VOR station. That does not mean it's pointing on a map straight to the right, even though 90 degrees we would think is straight to the right. Uh, it's magnetic east. So it's actually going to be a little bit south of uh, easterly direction and we'll take a look at that again uh, effective at 1000 feet above ground level so this only works and you can only navigate with vor after you're in the air which is sort of a uh, limitation so benefits you got a lot of stations there's very little air interference from lightning you can go on a straight line courses and if there's a solar flare that might affect gps it's not going to affect the vor ground station so um, they're a really good backup source for this it's a lot easier to navigate with gps uh, but vor is something that is required to move forward into your instrument landing limitations it has to be ground based you have to have line of sight and it is a limited range at low altitude you have to be above a thousand feet to make this uh, actually work. It also has limited range at high altitudes. It's not a global solution. It only really works within uh, you know, whatever region that you're in. So these are symbols that you would commonly see, uh, these little hexagon symbols. This one has a box around it that includes a distance measuring equipment. And this is a VOR sectional chart. So this is from Skyvector. You can see this one actually shows um, the Broomfield Airport, Rocky Mountain Metro, and it's VOR radio signal is a station is 115.4 and the call sign is BJC. So if we're going to tune our VOR radio to the Broomfield Airport, we would tune it to 115.4. And then you can see this little compass that's surrounding it. And this little VOR has a blue colored compass rose showing the magnetic direction. So you can see straight up is not actually north. It's actually up and to the right slightly. That's this little arrow. That is magnetic north. And that means that magnetic east is this direction here. So it's slightly down and to the right. So that's important to note because you might be thinking you're going at a heading of 000, which is you think is straight up and down, but it's actually probably more likely a heading of 355 or 350 because it's a little bit to the west of straight north. So we're going to take a look at this Broomfield Airport 
And let me zoom out on this. Here is Rocky Mountain Metro Airport. This is skyvector.com. And you can see the Denver um, VOR is right here. And that station is 117.9. Then we have another mile high VOR right here. So these VOR stations will allow us to navigate to them. So what the heck does that even mean to navigate to it? Well, if your airplane, let's say your airplane is actually right in this region, right where this word Jeffco is. And we want to try to navigate to the Rocky Mountain Metro Airport. So I'm going to go to this little simulator. And right now I have an airplane here and I have a VOR here. And I try to put them in about the same place as your map. So if I go back to the map, you can see here's Rocky Mountain. Here's my little airplane here. Rocky Mountain, my airplane here. So let's say I don't really know how um, how to find this airport. Well, the VOR station is really, really helpful for that. So if I um, am currently flying at a heading of 030, so this is my heading indicator right here on the aircraft. It says 030. Um, if I'm flying at this heading and I'm going to hit start, then there we go. My plane is flying in this direction. But I'm not going towards this airport. So how do I actually find this airport? Well, you can tune your VOR station, assuming that we have the VOR station tuned at 115.4. So we have to turn our um, tune our radio station to that. This little simulator doesn't have the radio station. It's assuming you're automatically tuned into it. And so if I turn my little knob here, then it's going to turn this little dial here. So let's keep turning it until our airplane is actually on that VOR radial. And if I do that, you can see this little dial, this little rod here is going vertical as I do that. Well, I'm still flying. We have the simulation running. So now I'm right on this particular line right here, just a little bit to the left of the line, or sorry, to the right of the line. But my heading is still not correct. So in order to get to this airport, this VOR station, I need to go at a heading of Let's see, that's 030, 4050, about 055. If I go to heading of 055, I'll get there. But note my airplane now is kind of crossing that line. So, and this little bar is starting to swing. Well, the, the direction that this bar swing tells you the direction that your airplane is from that particular radial and which way you need to go to get back on it. You can see it's swinging to the right. That means I need to bank my airplane to the right from this heading. So let's start to bank our airplane. Right now I'm going heading of 030. Let's bank the airplane. And we're going to turn it so that I'm going at a heading of, let's go 070. Or, yep, yeah, 070, heading of uh, 70 degrees, 070. And now you'll notice I should start approaching that line. So it, this little arrow, this little line is telling me you need to go right. That's the way it's swinging. Well, now you see it's starting to swing back to center. Once it's on center, I should be going the same heading that this is. So I need to start banking to the left again, slowly. And pretty soon, as soon as this line gets to vertical, if my heading matches what this VOR radial is, then I'll be going perfectly straight towards it. So I'm gonna let this run for just a second and we'll start to bank. I'm pretty darn close. I like that line is looking fairly vertical. So I'll bank to make my heading the same. Now you can see I'm going pretty much the same direction as this radial. If I continue on this line, then I'm going to end up right at this exact point. So let's speed this thing up. And I can actually click and drag this just to kind of show you. So I'm going to pause it. I'm going to pretend like I'm, my airplane is flying on this thing. And I'm flying towards it. I'm flying towards it. Notice this little vertical line here. If I get off to the right hand side, it says, hey, you need to go left. So I'd have to bank my plane left. If I get off to the left hand side, it says you got to bank to the right. And you can see the two arrow is highlighted. That means I'm going to that VOR. Well, if, if I fly over the top of it, then it gets a little confused. And you can see it's going to swing really far in one direction because it doesn't quite know where I'm at until I get going away from it. And now I'm still on this radial, but now it says I'm going from that VOR station. So that's essentially how you use these to navigate. You can point towards one, you can fly over the top of it, and then you can tune to your next one. So let's say your next one is maybe up here where this N is. So I can't actually move the VOR station, but I can move my plane as if it were moving towards that. Well, now if I want to tune towards this one, then I'm going to hit start. I can tune my VOR station 
and I'll tune it until this little bar goes vertical. Really can't look at this because that's you're not going to have that when you're flying. And so now I can see I'm right on that. So if I adjust my heading to a heading of 025-ish, so let's adjust my heading to 025. I'm going to bank the aircraft. Then I'm going to be flying straight towards it. Now we can look right up here. I'm flying straight towards it. My heading matches this heading, and this line is vertical. And that will help me navigate directly towards that. So let me pause that. So that's how you can navigate using VOR. VOR is also helpful if you want to see where in the world are you. So if I'm flying here and I want to find out where am I exactly, I can tune this VOR station. And I can tune it until, and I, I want the two thing to be highlighted. So I'm going to keep it turning. And I keep it turning and it says, and let's go a little bit slower now. There we go. And it says that I am on the radial of 270 towards this. So if I turn to a heading of 270, I'll be going straight towards this. So that can be helpful if your airplane, let's say if we're looking at the Rocky Mountain VOR and my airplane is here and I don't know where it is. So I tune to this radio station and I turn that dial until it shows a straight up and down vertical line right here that shows that I'm on that particular radial. And then it will say, hey, I am on the 270 radial pointing straight towards that. So that gives me a location. I'm somewhere on this horizontal line right here. Well, that only gives me one indication. So that means I could be anywhere on this line. I don't really know where I'm at. But then if I tune maybe to the um, Falcon station down here, I could see, well, where is my radial on that one? And then that's called triangulation. I know I'm on this line here. And I could tune to the Falcon one and find out I'm on this line here. And maybe that would point me in this exact spot. So by taking a paper map and drawing a line for the, both of those radials, you could actually determine where your aircraft is. So that's another way you can use VOR is using two of them to figure out your exact location. Let's go back to our presentation here and finish this up. So here's a, a couple of the different images of some VOR ground equipment. Uh, this is an antenna on an aircraft. That's what it might look like, the VOR receiver. It's a, an external antenna. It looks like a little V-shaped type thing. It's usually on the vertical stabilizer. And then in your actual cockpit, you tune this little thing. You're going to turn this little knob to whatever that station is. And I think the station for the Broomfield Airport, let's look at it again. Broomfield is 115.4. And then I could tune my second one to the Falcon VOR station, which was 116.3. So I could tune both of these stations to match that and then use my VOR needle until and turn the dial until both those are vertical lines. And when they're both vertical lines, then whatever the radial is, whatever that heading is, then that will give me my exact location. So usually you tune two different VOR stations. It helps you kind of cross check. So most aircraft will have two of these little nav um, wheels, these nav gauges here. And this is uh, something that you can look up if you want to find the actual VOR information for a particular VOR station. You can Google VOR and then that particular station. So we can do that with VOR KBJC. That is the Broomfield one. And then if I click on this, it should show us some information for this particular VOR. And sometimes it will give you a little graphic of it. Sometimes it'll just give you some of these navigational age, aid, aids, but this is what we can use for that. And with distance measuring equipment, distance measuring equipment will measure the slant range. So if you want to figure out how far you are away from a particular source, you tune your DME and you have to make sure you're using a DME equipped station on the ground. And it might tell you that you are um, a distance of 10 nautical miles. So if we go back to our little simulator here, this simulator tells us um, DME, and it says that I am 13.8 nautical miles from this particular VOR station. The problem is it doesn't know what your altitude is. So you have to do a little bit of math to figure that out. If I know that I'm 6,000 feet above ground level and I have 10 nautical miles from the station, then you can use Pythagorean's theorem, A squared plus B squared equals C squared, and you're going to have to solve for A, which is the horizontal distance. And that'll tell you how far away you are from that actual station. When you're really far away, it's going to be pretty close. 
Uh, but as soon as you fly directly over the station, you can see the station is going to say that you are one nautical mile away from it because that's about your altitude. Uh, so it doesn't really work when you're directly over the station. So the error increases as you get closer and closer. As you're really far away, if you're not too high above the ground, your slant range and this horizontal distance are going to be pretty close to the same. So in this particular example here, um, sketching this out would be a good idea because it gives you a sort of good representation. If you're one nautical mile away and one nautical mile high, the slant range is going to show 1.4 nautical miles, which is not entirely accurate. So that's why you have to know what your altitude is, and you can do some quick math in the cockpit to figure out what your actual distance is from that. So distance measuring equipment looks sort of like this, and then you have an antenna maybe down below the aircraft to be able to measure that. And it will show you in your transceiver how far you are away. This one shows 92.4 kilometers away, or sorry, nautical miles away. So you look for that particular gauge in the cockpit as well. And that's it for VOR and DME.